this is the study that I brought up earlier, which talks about, you know, when the IDC came out with this recently that said the vast majority of people consider the expertise on the left-hand side there, consider the expertise of a sales rep prior to making a buying decision. And again, on that top graph right there, if you're known as a thought leader, you are five times more likely to get the business than if you're not. Now, I'm not going to pretend like we're all going to become thought leaders overnight. I think that's a little ridiculous, um, but I think we can move in that direction, right? And, and, and that's what we'll, we'll, I'll share with you of, of at least how I've done it, right? And in a, in a meaningful way. Because when people first came, you know, when, when, fo- when social selling first came out, you know, I'm, look, I'm 44 years old. I'm a Gen Xer, right? When, when social selling first came out, I was like, great, you know, yet another thing I got to do to be successful in sales. You know, fantastic. Add it to the list. And the whole idea of like tweeting and posting and all that stuff just bothered me, especially just to build a fake following. And, and so I, 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 at first I totally discounted it, but, but it flipped for me after a while where I started to recognize the importance of it and realize that if I focused on myself first, right, if I focused on learning first, and this is where social selling really did flip for me was when I started looking at it as I should learn, right. And this is the business acumen piece of this. I should be learning about my products, about my solutions, about my industry, about the trends, about the personas that I'm going after, right? So that's, I should be learning about that stuff just as a pure business professional here. And so with that lens, uh, you know, I started learning first and then sharing, but only sharing when I thought it was relevant, when I thought it was important, okay? And that's that, that connector there where if you focus on you first and learning and building your business acumen and then only sharing when you learn something, that's when you can start to build your brand in an authentic way. And if we talk about, let's talk about some macro examples of why brand building is so important, right? Well, like, let's use this one. Like, y'all know The Rock, like Dwayne Johnson, right? So I love The Rock. (laughs) Do you know how much The Rock charges um, for the the movie studio? So when he signs up to do a movie, right, the movie studio is going to pay him whatever, $20 million or whatever it is, right? Do you know how much he charges the movie studio to do one post on Instagram? One post to promote his own movie? A million dollars. A million dollars per post, by the way. For him to go like, yo, go check out my new Jumanji 2, right? Whatever. A million bucks. <clears throat> and the reason, it sounds ridiculous. Like, you got your mind for a million dollars. But do you know how many followers the, the, the Rock has on, uh, on uh, Instagram? It's got like, I think it's like 190 million right now, which is absurd. And so that million dollars now becomes the best million dollars that that studio has ever spent on marketing. Because think about it. You got SEO, you got, you know, billboards, you got commercials, you got all that stuff. You got one, you got The Rock who had 190 million people following The Rock. And he says, go watch my movie. You got to go watch his movie, right? It's the most direct marketing you can get. And let's use another example, like, um, like Kylie Jenner. Did y'all see what Kylie Jenner did to Snapchat a while back? I mean, Kylie Jenner single-handedly built Snapchat, but she single-handedly ruined Snapchat. And, and I don't know if you remember like a while back, like a, about a year and a half ago, Snapchat updated their UI, right? So, and it, and it wasn't good and people didn't like it, right? But that's kind of the, that's kind of the thing about Snapchat, right? It, it's kind of hard to understand. That's why kids love it and parents don't get it, right? So, so but anyways, Kylie Jenner really didn't like it. And, and she put out a tweet. She goes, so does anybody else not open Snapchat anymore? Or, or is it just me? Ugh, so sad. So she sends out that tweet. The day she sent that out, Snapchat stock dropped by 6%, which was $1.5 billion off of their market cap. You tell me personal brand doesn't matter. And, and we're moving into a world where <clears throat> people just don't trust corporate brands. They just don't. You know, like again, me growing up, uh, we trust cor- Gen Xers. We kind of trusted corporate brands. I was like, oh, yeah, McDonald's. Yeah, it's yummy. And I don't know, it's cheap and easy, right? But now it's like, whoa, pink. Ooh, it's gross. Like, get away from me. I don't want anything to do with that. And you're seeing corporate brands fall off the wayside, left, right, and sideways, right? I mean, um, I mean, all the chain restaurants right now are, are, are struggling massively because millennials and Gen Zs don't want to go to chain restaurants. They don't want to go to quote unquote brands. They want to have more of an experience and that type of stuff. And that's also happening in a lot of corporations, like forget about, you know, food, but also businesses, you know, they, they, I actually think that marketing right now, um, I think companies are going to have to get real comfortable. The the next wave of marketing is I think companies are going to have to get real comfortable with individuals inside their business uh, representing their brand. 
right? And, and because because that that face of your brand is is a, is a person that people can trust, as opposed to the corporate message. And an easy way to for me to prove this is, you know, I look at my LinkedIn, right? Me, per, my my LinkedIn profile versus my corporate LinkedIn profile, right? So the Jay Barrows corporate page versus John Barrows's page. I have round almost getting up to 400,000 followers on, on my personal page. Whereas my corporate page, I don't know, we got maybe 10,000, 20,000 at this point, something like that. So people, cause people don't look to corporations for insights. They look at people for insights. And so how do we do this in an authentic way without wasting too much time without, uh, you know, like, yeah, just without wasting time and without getting in the way of driving results. Cause I think that's the, the challenge here is that a lot of people look at corporate, that personal brand building and say, I, I get it. I understand how important it is, but I got to hit my quota. You know what I mean? I got to hit my monthly quota. And, and I will tell you right now, personal brand building, it's not a short term thing, right? It, it's definitely a long term play. It's something that is going to carry you throughout the rest of your careers. But it's not like if you tweet or share something or anything like that, all of a sudden people are going to say, oh, let's do a bunch of business together. It's kind of a slow roll thing. So that's why I really recommend building it into your routine, right? So doing a little bit every day, but, but again, making the connection here that it's not just about brand building, just to build your brand, build it to like learn first, you learn first and then share, then you can build your brand in an authentic way.